Hi YouTube, this is Mike, and in this video I am going to be going over how to analyze the odds in Kino. First, I want to explain to you two very basic functions in math which you will need. They are the factorial function and the combinations function. And if you already understand these, you can skip ahead in the video. After I explain these two functions, I will demonstrate Kino in case you don't understand the rules, and then I will go through the math basing it on the, these two functions. So let's start out with the factorial function. The factorial function is the number of ways that you can order any given number of items. For example, let's say that you're the manager of a baseball team and you have to choose your batting order. That means that of your nine players, you have to choose a specific order in which they bat. So how many ways can you do that? Well, for the very first batter, there are nine players to choose from. Let's say you pick the shortstop. Now for the second player, there are eight players left. Let's just say you pick center field. So you multiply nine times eight. Nine for the first batter and eight for the second. For the third batter, there are seven players left. Let's say you pick the catcher. For the fourth player, there are six left and so on. You just go all the way down the order until you have picked everybody. And as you can see, there are 362,880 ways that you can order nine different players. Okay, let's go on to the combinations function. This is the number of ways you can choose a certain number of items out of a larger pool of items. For example, let's say you have a, a deck of 52 playing cards. How many ways can you choose five of those cards? Well, first let's talk about permutations. This is the number of ways that you can choose those five cards with regard to order. So for that first card, there are 52 possibilities that you choose. For the second one, there are 51 cards left. For the third, there are 50 left. For the fourth, there are 49 left. And for the fifth, there are 48 left. So if order matters, then there are 311,875,200 permutations of five cards out of 52. However, what if order does not matter? Then, what we're going to do is we're going to divide those permutations by the number of ways you can order five cards. How many ways can you order five cards? Well, that would be five factorial. So there's 120 ways you can order those five cards. So we divide the permutations by the number of orders to get combinations. So the number of ways you can choose five cards out of 52 at where order does not matter is 2,598,960. However, we don't need to go through all that. There's a, a shortcut to getting at these numbers. To getting a, the factorial of a number in Excel, you, say, you use the fact function. In this case, you would say equals fact nine to get the number of ways you can order nine items and you can see that cell A5 equals cell A1. Let's go back and looking at cell A1. So, and here is, here's the number of ways you can choose permutations. For example, if you want to know the number of ways you can choose five cards out of 52 with regard to order, then you would say equals permute 52 comma 5. So you start out with the number of items in the whole basket and then you put a comma and then the number of items that you pick. And you can see that equals the cell, cell A2. And if, you, if order does not matter, then you say equals combin and then the, and then the number of items and then the number that you pick. So <clears throat> there we go. If you didn't, I know I went over this a little bit fast, feel free to rewind and 
watch this again if you didn't completely understand this. I'm sure Wikipedia does a good job of explaining it too. And that said, I think I'm ready to go on to demonstrating Kino. Great. Let's demonstrate Kino, shall we, so that you understand the rules. And if you already understand them, you can go past this portion of the video. So first I'm going to pick two to 10 numbers from this range of one to 80. Then after I make my bet, the game is going to draw 20 numbers without replacement from the same field of one to 80. And I'm going to win according to the number of numbers that I pick that match the game's draw. And if a number match matches, it's called a catch. And let's look at the pay table. Here it is right here. It shows the number of spots that you picked along the top and the number of catches along the left row. For example, if I picked eight numbers and matched five, I would go down eight here and across five and I would get paid six, four, one. And four, one means that if you get that win that you don't get your original bet back. And games that are electronic do tend to pay on a 4-1 basis. So let's go back to the game and let's pick, let's pick nine numbers in the middle here and play. So I'm just betting one coin and I pick my numbers and this is the game's draw. So I caught only one number, number 15. I need to catch at least four to win anything. So let's try again. So here I caught three. Again, that doesn't win anything. I caught only one. So let's speed this up here. One catch, zero catches. Three catches, one catch, three catches, two catches. Yay, finally I win something. And actually I didn't really win. I only broke even. I only got my original bet back. But they mark the game's numbers in red. So you can see that I caught number 16, 26, 27, and 35. So let's, um, and by the way, you can also, how do I do this? Um, you can also change your numbers at any time. And you can also have the game pick them for you. So here it picked three because the last time I picked three. Let's say I wanted to pick nine. So I would pick nine, erase them, and then the game would pick nine randomly. So let's go back to Excel and I'll show you how to analyze the odds in Kino. Three. And we are back at Excel to work out the odds in Kino. So I left everything I did before in case you want to get this spreadsheet over here. I put this in a sheet called functions, but the main work is going to be done in this sheet called Kino. And to save time, I already put in the game's pay table. And by the way, what you see in the casino, these pay tables can vary according to how liberal or stingy the slot manager wishes to be. Over at videopoker.com, they tend to be very liberal. So next, let's work on the combinations. And this is the heart of the whole analysis. So let's blank this out. So again, we still have our pay table up here. Okay. For example, let's say that you pick seven numbers and catch three. How many ways can you do that? There's different ways you can do this, but the way I prefer to do it, the way I prefer to think of it is that the, the game picked, or should I say chose 20 winning numbers. How many ways can the player pick three of those, there are 1,140. 
However, that's not the end of the story. The player also picked four losing numbers. So there are 60 losing numbers, and the player picked seven minus three losing numbers. So there is a total of, let's put in a comma here, and let's make these numbers smaller. So there are 555,903,900 ways the player can pick three winning numbers out of seven. And now let's, I'm not sure what the word for this is, but let's make this safe to copy and paste. So the number of winning catches is always gonna be in column A, so I put a dollar before the A, and the number of picks is always gonna be in row 20, so I put a dollar before the 20. And now I'm going to copy and paste this through the whole table and let's make the numbers smaller again and smaller again so I can see all of them. Well, let's, uh, let's shrink these smaller numbers so we can have more space here. Let's see if we can actually make this bigger. There we go. All right, now some of these we got this error message because for example, this cell here, C29, that refers to catching eight numbers out of picking only three, which is impossible. So I'm gonna make an if statement out of this. I can just pick any one cell. I'm gonna say if the number of catches is less than or equal to the number of picks, then do what I just did, otherwise put a zero. And again, let's put in those dollar signs when we don't want the columns and rows to change. So now I should be able to copy and paste this through the whole spreadsheet successfully. And let's find the total of each row. And again, the font size is too big. So this font size is nine. So let's go to a nine there. And let's make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so these are the all the possible combinations for any number of picks from two to 10 and any number of catches from zero to 10. So this was the, the heart of the whole problem. But let's finish it up here. Next, let's work on the probabilities. This is really quite easy. Let's blank this out. So the number, the probability of any given event, let's look at the number of ways to catch three out of seven again. So we look at the number of combinations for three out of seven and we divide it by the total number of combinations for picking seven numbers. And I'm gonna put in a dollar here for the 32 because the total column is always 32. And I can copy and paste this. And this is only showing one significant digit. So let's increase that. So this shows the probability of all possible outcomes for all possible number of, of picks. If you per prefer percentages, we can do that. But I like probabilities expressed from zero to one. And by the way, I was thinking that why don't I verify these numbers for you? For example, picking, what's the total number of ways that you can choose seven numbers out of 80? That would be common 80 comma the seven. And you could see that that matches my total. And let's copy and paste that down just to make sure we did it right. So there's our verification. Okay, so we're ready for the last step. Again, let's just copy and paste this formatting down, the return. So let's blank out the body of the table. So the return is simply the product 
of the probability, whoops, times what it pays. For example, that shows the, prob the expected return from catching zero out of five, which is obviously zero because it doesn't pay anything if that happens. But I can copy and paste that formula down and voila, there is the contribution to the return for all possible picks and catches. For example, let's look at a, a pick five game. If we catch zero, one, or two, that's a loss. Thus the contribution to the return for all three of those is zero. If we catch three, we get paid three for one. So three times 0 0.083935 is 0 0.251805. And by the same logic, about 15.7% of the return comes from catching four and 54% comes from catching five. And this total column shows the sum of all the ways you can win in this game. And you can see that the, the returns are pretty close to 95% in all cases. So let's see what the maximum is. So the maximum return of the game is 94.99%, which comes from the pick six. And by the way, in the actual casino, the real casinos tend to pick returns usually between 88 and 92%. The stingier casino, obviously the lower it will be. Be especially beware of any games at the Las Vegas airport. That, those will go all the way down to 85%, which is the lowest setting the game maker machines have. So I can't think of anything left to say. I love to keep talking, but I'm out of things to say about Kino. So thanks for watching this video, YouTube. Thanks for making it to the end. If you liked it, please uh, thumb me. Better yet, subscribe to my channel. At this point, I've already done videos on craps math and sickbo math, so please check those out if you're interested in those topics. And I plan to make more math and gambling videos soon. So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.